All right. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of our weekly Friday market update. Every Friday, I go over several different things, and I'm, not gonna, I'm actually going to change it up this time around. Um, starting today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to always kickstart some things about my personal updates as to what has happened for me over the week. I'll then share about what has been going on in the local Bay Area in terms of different headline articles that I want to comment on. And then the third piece is I'm going to talk about from a national level, what are some of the things that are happening uh, across the country? And then the final thing that we're going to go over is the market updates. So we, I always extract the data from the MLS so that you as a viewer can see for yourself what is actually happening on a week by week basis so that that can impact potentially your decision or at least give you the confidence in giving you all the right information that you need. So for this week, love to give a couple of updates. Let's see. For me personally, um, got in contract for a house today. So congratulations to my clients. Uh, we got a townhome in Palo Alto listed at 1.6 $1 million. Uh, just happened this morning. Super excited for that. Another super exciting thing, it came through a referral from uh, a great partner of mine out in Austin, Texas sent me a referral and um, did a presentation this week and very excited we got a listing agreement signed. So that is gonna be scheduled for sometime in January. And so that will be in wonderful Los Gatos, probably about $2.5 million. Super exciting. And anything else this week? Um, I think that's about it for this week. And uh, got a lot of closings that's gonna happen next week. A lot of the new construction are gonna be closing next week. I believe I have three that will hopefully close next week. At least two of them will for sure. One of them is still being delayed. Um, so very exciting for those clients to be able to finally move in right before the holidays. So let's go ahead and talk about the data itself of the weekly news. All right, so luxury home sales are skyrocketing in the Bay Area right now. The pandemic helps explain why. Now the key about this, as I mentioned from time and time again, when it comes to the divide, the digital divide has been bigger than ever, right? So if you are in tech, I mean, just look all around. I mean, look at the stocks, look at IPOs, look at interest rates. I mean, there are millionaires being minted for all of these IPOs because it gives them that liquidity to be able to do what they want to do. And so a lot of people have been um, using and leveraging those stock options and RSUs to be able to trade up for a bigger house, hence why the luxury home sales are doing very well. Typically, luxury home sales, as you can see, is usually about three million plus is considered uh, quote unquote luxury. I mean, quite frankly, the one to three million is still considered luxury all across the country. But you can see even the three million plus is still doing very well. So something just to be mindful of, like it's still very, very strong. I mean, sure, are people, some people leaving? Potentially, they're also just buying vacation houses. And they may still be buying a primary houses here in the Bay Area. Um, so I still see that across the board. I've done a, little, a, a few deals like in Palo Alto, for example. You know, everything is still selling within one week. And those are average over three, three and a half million dollars. So it gives you an idea. Like, it's just incredible to see there is plenty of money. So make no mistake there. Next, let's talk about Facebook. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting to see there are certain companies that are just, I mean, they just really are, are just leaving the Bay Area altogether, right? They're not even trying to help uh, housing or do anything like that. But then you have the big tech companies and that could be a combination. Maybe it's because they're under a lot more scrutiny today. Um, but either way, it's still nice for them to, to at least make these acknowledgements. So you have like Facebook, you have Google, you have Amazon, you have these big tech companies that are pledging different types of pro, um different types of donations for affordable housing, but also for different projects altogether. I think over billions of dollars are committed to create these different types of programs. So as you can see, Facebook, Apple, and Google have all pledged for the local Bay Area. So they're clearly not going anywhere. Otherwise, they would not um, be donating all this money, continue to build more houses, but also build more corporate real estate space. So it's really interesting to see this. Um, I suspect it's going to continue to happen especially as they have more and more outside political pressures. Now, um, one of the things here that I found interesting is related to Sacramento. 
So Sacramento um, is, I mean, there are certain markets, and Sacramento is expected to be the nation's hottest housing market. I think it's really interesting for several reasons. One, as I mentioned, tech has done phenomenally well. So tech, uh, you know, if you're working in tech, you have a combination of really good things happening. One, your income is still very high. Two, your stability is very is, is there because they're doing better than ever. Three, you may have really, really strong RSUs. And so, and then four, you also have more flexibility than somebody that was, let's say, a small business owner that still has to go into a to a shop to work every day. And so with all of these components, it allows a lot of people to consider to move a little bit further away. Now, Bay Area to Sacramento, probably two to two and a half hour drive, depending on where you live in the Bay Area and where you decide to live in Sacramento. However, it's a it's been a huge benefactor of this. Uh, of the flexibility. The question ultimately is, are they buying for a primary and it's going to be there just for a few years until things get better? Or do they relocate permanently? No one knows for certain because there's a lot of things being played out. But nevertheless, there is uh, a lot of pressure for the local markets there. So it has actually brought up a lot of incredible uh, price increases. So I brought up earlier, like the the Bay Area is competitive. And for those that I work with on the Bay Area, you know, we know the lo low inventory, we know the competition, but prices are not crazy in the sense like, if you see what has sold in the past, it will likely sell for pretty close to that. Maybe factor a little bit of appreciation, but nothing like outrageous, right? You, you wouldn't be shocked with these numbers. However, when you see this data here, real estate prices soar during pandemic climbing 25%. This is 25% in less than a year. Keep that in mind. This is since basically March, April that has soared this much. So a lot of the areas further out of the Bay Area have actually been much crazier. And there are several reasons for that. Number one, what is the reason for people to look out of the Bay Area to begin with? It's maybe a secondary property. It may be just to get away from the house. So think about that buyer mentality. They want to get out of wherever they're living now as fast as possible. So if you're competing against that kind of individual or those families, they rather just bid much higher just to get it done with, right? And so if a lot of people have that mindset, comps, which is what eventually gets changed from active to pending to sold, will eventually show that. And so that will ultimately bring a lot of dynamic pressures upwards for that reason. So it's really important to understand the mindset is very different and also understand, you know, while Sacramento has increased, let's say by 25% or whatever it may be, relative to most areas, this is all very, very quote unquote little money, right? I mean, if they're able to have bought, quite frankly, majority have been able to buy a million dollar house in the Bay Area, like what is a $500,000 house then? Like that's, nothing for them 25 percent increase who cares it's six hundred thousand dollars the time spent and the time looking and the frustration they'll just pay the premium to get it over with so it's really interesting to see that because it clearly is happening like initially i saw that back in basically like may of like what's been going on with contra costa county like brentwood and things like that which traditionally didn't do that well but as soon as things caught on and people were like, you know what, I can get a big house for a million bucks. It's not too far out, still along the BART line. That's when they a lot of people ultimately decided to move there and then they bid like crazy. So like 25% actually happened in three months during that time. It slowed down in the sense of the increased slowdown, but the prices are, are kind of level. But that gives you an idea like it's a different mentality versus the people in the Bay Area that are buying. Sure, there's competition, but people live here. And they're not in as crazy of a rush as as the people that are moving a little bit further out. Very important to understand, especially if, you know, if you're in those markets, just to uh, level set the framework. Now, a few kind of corporate real estate news. Um, so this is uh, interesting news. And I'm, I'm going to see this happening across. Biotech is a huge player here in the Bay Area. Do not be surprised as these big companies going to continue to expand their corporate real estate space. Many of these tech biotech companies cannot work remotely indefinitely. They have a lot of lab equipment. They have a specific space. 
they want to maybe keep researching proprietary. There's a lot of things here just to be mindful of that will be a huge driver moving forward. And um, I suspect that's going to be the case, especially as there's so much tech talent here, great universities, but also just a giant hub. I believe it's it's at least the, very, the top three in the country as being a biotech hub. It could be arguably number one, depending on what metric to use. Now, this is some sad news. Um, interesting enough, uh, back in my previous life in software sales, uh, Levi Strauss was one of my clients. And so I've actually been to this building. We actually, had, our goal at that time was to really analyze the space. And we actually did a bunch of like room and desk booking kind of systems. And uh, it's interesting to see that they're trying to, They, I, I don't know if they own this, but they've been here for a long time for anyone that's familiar uh, with this, with their location. But they're looking to sublease a third of their San Francisco headquarters, adding to office market slump. We have a big divide. Um, a lot of the companies in San Francisco are are combination of either leaving or doing remote work. Um, it seems like it's happening across uh, that area. Um, the South Bay is a different story. A lot of the companies are still acquiring uh, very rapidly a lot more space. So just something to be mindful of, of what you think between the San Francisco market versus the South Bay and, and other markets. So. Something really interesting to see. I don't know who's going to take up this space either. I don't know how strong the sublease market is when, quite frankly, the regular market is difficult. Something just to keep an eye out for. Okay, what's going on with mortgage rates? I mean, just cr pretty incredible uh, figures. As you can see, mortgage rates hold steady at record lows. U.S. weekly figures for 5-1 arm, it's about 2.8%. 30-year fix, 2.7%. 15-year Fixed rate, 2.26%. That's incredible. It's kind of slowed down for sure. And I suspect as vaccines have been approved, now they're being rolled out. Um, I'm not sure how much longer it can stay at these bottom figures. Keep that in mind as you factor in your uh, interest payments and monthly rates, because that's a big factor of affordability and you know how it compares versus what you're paying now versus what um, your your rental situation may look like. So something to be mindful of there. Future remote work unclear, according to National Association of Realtors. So I've been mentioning uh, quite a bit. It, it's, I think, I think there's pretty unanimous decisions that a majority will have flexibility of the work. However, it's unclear if this is a, a fully remote uh, situation or if it's several days a week. There's not too many that are actually going full, full remote even after when it clears up. I suspect it's going to be a hybrid model, but be mindful of that. Like, just be look at your surroundings right now. Let's say in the Bay Area, traffic is already picked up. If you live in South San Jose, if you live in like Dublin Pleasanton area, if you live in the East Bay, very very apparent already. So, and quite frankly, most of the big tech companies have not gone back to the office. Uh, it's really just biotech right now. Schools are fairly limited in opening up. So just something to be mindful of, of traffic, my suspicion and my guess is that traffic will likely get worse when things get back to normal than ever before. Because on the combination, if you look at my weekly Thursday uh, series of how cities are redeveloping their space, a lot of them are, are much denser. So a lot more condos, townhomes in general. And so there's a lot more coming up. And at the same time, people are going further out. So, and they're all going in the same direction. So unless these big tech companies maybe expand a location, which they haven't done much of, let's say far East Bay, I suspect we're gonna, it's gonna be pretty interesting. I would say it's gonna take maybe one to two years, but I think after the end of next year and the early the following year, it's gonna be really interesting to see the traffic patterns. Even with low inventory, expect a strong 2021 housing market. I mean, we're going to see the data momentarily. We are literally midway through December. What a crazy year, number one. But I don't know if, if everyone else agrees, but it went by kind of quick. I think it was really, really slow in the beginning because of the concerns and um, because people were kind of locked up. But once you look back, it's like, seriously, it's been almost nine months since we've been sheltered. And it almost seems like deja vu. For people in the Bay Area, because we are at a bigger lockdown now. So 
something just to be mindful of. Um, we're going to see the data. Low inventory right now. Prices typically drop in the winter time, but this year is certainly different. But the level of activity that I see right now, I, I haven't seen this in a long time. Um, it's been incredible to see. So I suspect we've had an amazing and incredible housing year this year. But I think next year you can save this. I think it's going to be really intense. Um, if things just play out as they are right now, it should be really intense next year, uh, given um, given the activity. And let's take a, take a look at the activity so you can see for yourself, and then you can make your own decision. So first things first, let's take a look at San Mateo County. San Mateo County, let's look at the data. Um, let's make this. San Mateo County. San Mateo County, 106 new listings, 134 contingent pending this week. These figures are the lowest it has been all year, just so you know. So for those that are actively looking, I mentioned to everybody, don't get discouraged uh, because you never know, right? Even though it's about uh, maybe 40% less than it was at the peak of pre-COVID, you just never know if the property that you like happens to show up. So don't be disappointed be ready if it does show up when it comes to prices you can see december has started to increase interesting enough october november was actually uh, a, a big decline relative to august september however year over year is still higher december looks like it's picked up a little bit slightly um, i suspect this will probably be what it stays for i don't think we're going to hit record highs in san mateo county but you're still going to likely see these same levels Condos, townhomes, a little bit different story. As you can see, a little bit of decline. It's just not as popular of an option for most people, given if you're going to spend a million dollars, they have a lot of options to spend a million dollars. Something just to be mindful of, uh, but it is case by case depending on the unit and the property itself. Let's take a look at Santa Clara County. Santa Clara County, we have also hit the lowest fit, uh, amount of listings in any, any given week, 262. That is also about... 30 plus percent lower than it was um, just even weeks before. However, look at the number that's contingent pending, still a higher amount, 303. But interesting enough, what the prices have not actually reflect this, uh, these, these changes. So November was actually the highest in history for single family houses, but December has had a decrease. I suspect though that this will likely pick up. So I don't think it's gonna be as low as it is now but I think it'll be a little bit higher. So just be mindful of that. Condos, townhomes, on the other hand, slight increase, as you can see here. We're at about average, uh, I would say about 900,000, maybe a little under 900,000 for a condo townhome configuration. Alameda County, um, don't be discouraged with this. Um, I have, funny enough, anytime there's a big discrepancy like this, it's because somebody input a sold price incorrectly. I've actually shared this with the listing agent. She will change it. Instead of like it was $760,000 what it sold for, but she had three extra zeros. So it got sold for uh, $760 million. Um, but uh, either way, I suspect it's going to be uh, relatively flat. Uh, I would say relatively flat. But as you can see, over time, because it's really skewed, it's relatively flat when you look at this view. But if you look at the actual numbers, because of these gaps, it's actually a, a pretty decent increase, at least a 10% increase since uh, the May timeframe. Alameda County still is competitive. I have uh, several clients who are looking in like Northeast Bay, so um, kind of Northern Oakland's parts, Berkeley, Emeryville, still very competitive, still a lot of offers, some that are going higher than expected. Um, so keep that in mind as you make offers in that market, it's, it is more competitive than other markets. Condos townhomes, steady increase too. Last but not least, let's take a look at Contra Costa County. So Contra Costa County, as I mentioned, has been one of the hottest markets locally. You can see if you compare the May timeframe, which was basically about $800,000. And then you see even today, it's almost a million dollars. I mean, that's a 25% increase um, in a very short amount of time. Now, fortunately, it's kind of plateaued in a sense, but 
Uh, that's just something to expect. Things do move quickly. In the condos town homes, it has been more popular because of the lower price points. I mean, you can still get the average condo in town for under 600,000 in Contra Costa County. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this latest series. If you or anyone you know is considering to buy, sell, or invest in the Bay Area, I would love to get introduced. It's quite frankly, it has been incredible to grow with you guys, but at the same time, it's been incredible for all of the support. Um, I think this week, including today and over the weekend, I have eight different buyers that we're looking at homes with. So it's just kind of just amazing to see. And so there is still a lot of activity. I would say we have probably enough activity up until, I mean, we're in the 11th day. You know, Christmas is in two weeks. It's pretty much this weekend and maybe next weekend. I think it's the opportunities right now to be able to try to find something. I think the following two, the following two weeks will be really much slower. Um, but then again, no one's going on vacation these days. So you just never know. But uh, if, if there's anything I can help you help you with, please reach out anytime. If you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and click on the notification bell. You'll be notified for every video that pops up. And be sure to leave a comment with if any questions that you may have. If you're watching on podcast, please feel free to leave me a positive review. I appreciate that. And if you're watching this live on social media or on the recorded feed, feel free to reach out anytime. Happy to help. And we can go from there. Hopefully, you'll have a nice weekend. Looks like here in the Bay Area, we're going to have some rain which has not happened in a long time. Stay dry, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.